Hey everyone, I'm Philip, and today I'll be showing you how you can use Figma variables to make like a 2D game in Figma. First of all, we want to set up some variables for our game. So let's click on the empty space and go to local variables. Then let's create a few variables. For example, I want a number, which is the player X for the player's movement in the X direction. And also another variable player Y for the same thing in the Y direction. And finally, maybe a movement speed. So movement speed. Now that we have our variables, we can use these variables to control the location of our player inside of the game world. So the way we do this, because right now you can't assign variables to X and Y. You can assign variables to those where you see you have this little icon over here. So the way we can get around this is by creating a frame and putting our character inside. Now let's make the frame auto layout and then we assign the character to the bottom right of this auto layout frame. So as you can see, Depending on the width and height of the frame, our character moves around as well. So let's remove the padding from the left and right to make the character at the bottom. And finally, we can put this frame into our game world, something just like this. So now our width and height will control where our player is. Now let's assign the variables uh, X and Y to the positions like so. And you notice our character has disappeared, but that's because this clip content is activated. So once you deactivate it, you see that it's just outside of the frame, which is why we can't see it. So let's use this time to shift our character back into frame. And once our character is in frame, now we can add in our different functions in order to make our player move around the map. So to do this, we go into prototyping mode and we can select this screen as the prototype entry. But first it has to be a frame for us to add it as the prototype entry. So we can select frame selection and now we can select this frame as the flow starting point. And now that we have converted into a frame, what we can do is select the frame and add our interactions for moving the player. So for example, we have the key slash gamepad event and we can select the right key to move our player. So for example, set variable and we want to change the player X to player X plus the movement speed. So just like that, now our player will be able to move right. So now I'll just set up the rest of the keys. So as you can see, now that we've set up all the movement keys, the way our character will move is if the width increases, it will move to the right. And if the height increases, it will move downwards. But as you can see, there's this nasty white square here. So we can just get rid of that by pressing the minus icon here. And also you'll realize that our player is somehow able to move outside of the map like so. So to avoid this behavior, what we can do is add in the new max width variable. So for the max width, you can just set the maximum width to the maximum that you want to allow the player to go to. And we can do the same thing for the height as well. So we can just drag like this. And now the player won't be able to leave the map. And since that's done, you can realize our variable has been unassigned. So let's just reapply it again. So the width will be the player X and the height will be the player Y. And one last thing is our character also needs to be inside the main frame. So let's just put it in. And one final thing we need to do is to increase our movement speed. So as you can see, our movement speed is currently zero. Let's change it to five. And now all we need to do is click here and go to present mode. And now in present mode, we can move our character around just like that. So this is just a simple introduction to variables using the 2D game example, but you will probably use it for things that are more related to your job, perhaps like switching between light mode and dark mode or interactions between different buttons, like increasing the quantity of an item ordered. So hope this tutorial helps and see you in the next video. Cheers.